Creed three is the ninth film in the 50 year long Rocky franchise. And is the third film of the spinoff eight year Creed franchise star. Michael B. Jordan makes his directorial debut in the first film in this franchise without Sylvester Stallone on or behind the camera as Rocky Balboa. This movie does take place after the events of the second film, Adonis, his career is he's on the twilight of his career. He's heading into retirement and one of his former best friends who has been in prison for the last 18 years, who was going to be a bot, who was a boxing prodigy before he got into prison. Damon Anderson played by Jonathan Majors comes out of prison and wants to be the best boxer. And there's some very personal backstory on why Damian Anderson wants to be Adonis Creed. It's also Bianca Creed back from this film, back from the other two films played by Tessa Thompson. And they also now have a daughter uh, played by Mila Davis Ken, who is deaf, and they have that relationship as well going on as well. The film is an hour and 56 minutes long and is PG 13. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here on Max Talk. We're talking about Creed 3. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell if you're new to the channel. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and a box office show every single Tuesday. So please subscribe. Ring the bell. Comment down below. First of all, where, what are your thoughts on the Rocky franchise? I'm actually probably thinking of doing a possible Rocky franchise ranking uh, over the next week, maybe on Monday or Tuesday. I'll let you know more info on that. But um, yeah, I'm very, uh, if, let me know, where do you, is it, do you like this better than Creed 2 or Creed 1? Or do you think they should really stop with the Rocky franchise? If you've seen the film, did you feel that there was no rock in the movie? Or did you like this as a pretty much a standalone movie? If you've not seen it, tell me, are you going to watch it? And are you not watching it? Because Stallone is not in the movie. Also, please like the video, guys, the thumbs up button. So obviously, we can talk about the drama really quickly. Obviously, Sylvester Stallone and Michael B. Jordan do not have a, that type of beef. And because Balboa Productions still partly produced the film, um, Sylvester Stallone does have a producer's credit on this movie. Um, his... Um, Beef has been with Erwin Winkler, who is the he is the he owns the rights to this franchise, um, and they are the, they have been beefing for the last two, couple years since this film has been in development. Um, very much disagreeing on the direction of the franchise, um, and that's really caused this to be the first film in this entire franchise with no Rocky on screen as and him as a writer or director behind the screen. Um, so that was the big headlines. I was really pumped because this was Michael B. Jordan versus. Jonathan Majors and Jonathan Majors is uh, taking over Hollywood at the moment. It was just Kang the Conqueror two weeks ago and uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Um, two weeks later is now uh, the villain in the next Creed film. And honestly, I really wanted to see Michael B. Jordan in the director's chair. It's his directorial debut. I decided to see what he could do. So let's get my thoughts on Creed three. First of all, I want to come out and say this: um, I love Creed one. I think it's one of the best films and there's an argument for it to be the best film in this entire nine film franchise um it's my number two i think right now um i like creed 2 a lot uh they did kind of take that easy formulaic way of doing drago son and it just didn't feel as personal as the first film and this film is definitely personal i had an absolute blast with creed 3 in the movie theater. Uh, it was a great movie theater experience. My entire crowd was into this movie clapping during the boxing scenes. Um, I think the biggest praise though I do wanna say is actually Michael B. Jordan as a director. He This is a really well-made film and you can tell that Michael B. Jordan just had so much experience Obviously, with the the you know being directed so many times by Ryan Coogler and being on such big films like the first couple Creed films and Black Panther, um, where he knows the scope. And this is the first ever sports film that's shot on IMAX. Um, and the biggest comment is I love the way these boxing scenes have been shot. This is one of my favorite. Um, this is my some of my favorite boxing scenes in the entire franchise because of the way they're shot. It feels like you're really on in the ring. And you really feel every single hit that is made uh, by whoever's in the ring fighting. And that's a huge compliment. I think a lot of these films want to pull you away and show the reactions and stuff. But this film goes pretty nit and gritty with the boxing and the punches and the mid and every little detail was really impressive. That really comes down to Michael B. Jordan from behind the camera. Um, but what's great about this movie is that how special of these fight scenes are. The movie is very much a standalone film that's a lot more character driven, very similar to the first film. As I said, Adonis is coming really retired 
um, just trying to support his wife and daughter living a great life in Los Angeles. Um, and this is where Damien comes into the fray. And I don't really want to talk about in, in this review how Damien, uh, I guess Damien and Donna are just childhood friends. Damien at one point, they were in a situation where Damien got caught and went to prison and Adonis um, got out of that situation. Um, and I do want to say that these two on screen together, it's magnetic. These are two mega stars that are must watch TV in this movie. And um, Jonathan Majors' is Damien Anderson is one of the most must needed um, villains that this franchise has had, I think all the way back since Rocky IV. This is an a amazing villain. He's not written to be this multi-dimensional villain. He has a very clear one-dimensional path to why he wants to get to Adonis, but it's the performance and the charisma of Jonathan Majors that really carries that character. Um, he is so fabulous in this movie. And as I keep talking about, it feels like every time I see him, I did reviews back on this channel all the way back from Lovecraft Country. He is taking over Hollywood for a reason. He is one of, if might not, he might be the best actor right now working. He's unbelievable in this movie because there's not too much on the page, but he brings it all that out in spades. Um, and his chemistry with Michael B. Jordan is terrific. You can feel that they have lifelong friends. The camaraderie is there and the rivalry as well. And the jealousy is there. And What's kind of interesting is that because Damien was in prison for 18 years, he's not the most trained boxer. So the kind of way he box and fights is kind of the most interesting I've seen in a film. It's a little detail, but he's not the cleanest of boxers. He takes some cheap shots. It's, they're kind of different uh, than the previous villains in this franchise. And I just really appreciated his character. Adonis, also Michael B. Jordan, on the screen was fantastic as is in this movie as well. I think equally as good as he was in the first film he has a the family dynamic is also brought to the forefront the most out of any of these creed films um tessa thompson's great in this movie um and the relationship between the you know the bianca and adonis and their daughter amara was really awesome and one of my favorite parts of the movie is just adonis and bianca with amara these family scenes were excellent in this movie I think that's what the, I think a lot of the later Rocky films really struggled was Rocky in retirement with the family. Um, they really hone in on, yes, he he definitely obviously is brought out of retirement in this movie, but he is very much cool with just being a stay at home dad um, with his, with his, you know, girl, you know, his wife, you know, going off and doing all of these fun music things. And I, I, I do love the family dynamic in this movie. Um, and this is a very personal movie. This is one of the most personal Rocky films of all time because this is not just another challenger that Adonis has to be. Like in the first one, which is Pricky Rick, Ricky Conlon. Second movie was just Drago's son. Damien feels like a threat because he really was the boxer before Adonis wanted to be. And based on how they show Damien in this movie, he is a very physical and it feels like an actual legitimate personal threat both in the ring and out of the ring to Adonis. And that elevates the movie. I can't remember a, a Rocky film where you have this much buildup and story and personalness with both characters. I think obviously you have fun villains like Clubber Lang and, and Drago. But I think this is the most personal we've gotten really in a fun, entertaining way. We really care about both sides of the match all the way, I think, since a, a Rocky 1 and 2 with Apollo and Rocky. I think this is really personal, which is why I think the movie really works for me. Um, I had a great time. It's a fun movie. It's well made. The story itself for me really works. The fact that, and it also is not as formulaic. It's just not just an, another Rocky film. Um, I try, there are obviously formulas in there that still makes this feel like a Rocky film, but overall the movie it does, feels totally different from the past two Creed films in a very good way. It's a standalone film, well, yes, there are times you might want to see Rocky in the film. Uh, Rocky does not necessarily need to be in big portions of this movie because it's very much Adonis' franchise here moving forward. And you can feel it um, in this movie. Um, so I like that it was kind of a standalone film. Um, I think Rocky should be back moving forward, though, if they're going to continue with this franchise. Um, but I had a blast. I do have a couple negative critiques. They kind of don't have an explanation of how Damien... Um, the way that some people get championship matches in this uh, movie, 
makes absolutely no sense. I know for a lot of uh, non-sports people who watch this movie, they won't really care about it. But as someone who's in sports and watches wrestling and stuff like that and knows the boxing stuff, I'm the way that some people get these matches in this uh, movie don't really make a lot of sense. And it was kind of like, oh, this guy's who hasn't boxed and eight, who hasn't is not even a professional boxer is now fighting for the world championship. It made totally no sense. Um uh, and that was another nitpick. Um, I do think all the movies a bit too long towards the end. Um, it does drag once the, you know, the ending boxing scene happens. I do think it kind of drags a bit towards it. And as I said, there are I think, two specific scenes where I do think Rocky really needed to be in these scenes. And you can feel like they don't even want to really mention him in story because he's not in the movie, uh, which was, you can kind of feel that. At certain points, as I said, I think Damien on the page could have been a bit more dynamic. It's brought out by the dynamic performance, but I think on the page, I think they, if they want to continue, I think they need to be a bit better written on the page. So overall, I actually really thought it was a great movie. Um, and I this franchise for me is just is great. This Creed trilogy is fantastic. Um and if they're going to continue to make you mo make more, what Michael B. Jordan said, I would love it. And also love for him to be behind the camera. He's a director now to watch in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And Jonathan Majors is also an actor to continue to watch in Hollywood. I'm going to give Creed 3 uh, a 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to go 86% uh, for Creed 3, which is currently in theater. So I'm going very high bar for Creed 3. So far, my favorite movie I've seen so far. Uh, this year. So more videos here coming on the channel very soon, including Last of Us reviews, Mandalorian and Bad Batch reviews, box office breakdown, Scream 6 review coming down next week, and possibly a Rocky franchise ranking video. I'll see you guys in the next one.